Okay, we'll get started, everyone. Thanks for joining us today as we introduce our new bill, H.R. 9649, the Unwar Emergency Funding Restoration Act. We'll have a few comments from our colleagues on this legislation, Congresswoman Jayapal, Congresswoman Schakowsky, a few words from Congresswomen o Omar and Rashida Tlaib, the Congresswoman from Detroit. Then we'll hear from some of our organizational partners who have worked with us uh, for several months to create a very constructive bill uh, that restores funding to UNRWA and is supported by over 100 human rights organizations. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, and it has over 65 original co-sponsors. Yes, indeed. Then, as time permits, we'll have a few questions from the press. I'm going to start with some very disturbing numbers. One million, one million. That's the number of estimated Gazans who will not have enough food this month. 700,000, that's the number of women and girls in Gaza who do not have access to menstrual products or even running water and toilet paper. 100,000, that is the number of Palestinians who have been seriously injured without access to functioning hospitals. 41,000, that's the number of Palestinians killed by Israel since October 7th. And that number doesn't include those poor souls unaccounted for underneath the rubble. Since October 7th, thousands of Palestinian children have had one or both legs amputated without anesthesia. And I want to reiterate, without anesthesia. These conditions, my friends, are absolutely deplorable. These conditions, my friends, are inhumane. But the numbers don't tell the whole story of the scale and devastation of this man-made crisis. I urge everyone to take a moment to think about someone you love. Think about your favorite person. And then I want you to realize this. Thousands of people in Gaza have lost their favorite person. And it's safe to say that every single person has witnessed or experienced unimaginable terror. They are grieving while wondering where their next meal is. They are grieving while suffering common, treatable illnesses. We can't erase their grief, this is true, but we can prevent damage and loss. Right now, the U.S. is withholding badly needed life-saving funding to UNRWA. This creates a void no other organization is able to fill. This must end today. It's why we introduced the UNRWA Funding Emergency Restoration Act of 2024 to restore funding and to restore hope. Congress needs to pass this bill now before this session ends. Our bill, again, has been endorsed by 121 organizations, and it has 65 co-sponsors and counting. It is now an honor to bring before you someone who knows that this is not an issue for one type of person or one faith. This is an issue for all of humanity. She knows in a time of great political divide that we have to find common ground and our humanity to vote for, to restore funding to Gaza's primary humanitarian organization. And now I introduce Representative Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Carson, for your incredible leadership, for the work that you have done every day, not only on this bill, but throughout your time in Congress. We are so grateful to you. Um, I also want to thank my colleagues who are here, as well as Hassan El Taib from FCNL and Mara Cronenfeld uh, from UNRWA Use. We are so grateful for you being with us today as well in this effort to restore funding to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees, what we call UNRWA. For decades, UNRWA has played an integral role in supporting the welfare of Palestinian refugees to ensure that they can live with dignity. 
UNRWA is a truly unique organization, and I think it's important that we understand that. It has tremendous on-the-ground understanding of the region and the people, which is why it is so effective at ensuring that humanitarian aid makes it to the people who need it the most, even in the most difficult of conditions. Of course, in Gaza, but also in the West Bank, in East Jerusalem, in Syria, in Jordan, and in Lebanon. Humanitarian aid in the region is already severely restricted. Representative Carson gave you some numbers. I'm gonna give you a few more. According to the World Food Program, 96% of the population of Gaza, 96% is facing food insecurity. 2.15 million people are at crisis levels of hunger. And there is a very high risk of famine with many NGOs like the World Food Program being severely hindered in how much and how often they can get food in due to constant bombardments. This is the environment in which UNRWA operates. Its work and its knowledge is not replaceable. Just imagine UNRWA has delivered flour, flour to more than 1.9 million people. It's rehabilitating and maintaining water wells, providing mental health services, health training for nurses to provide those polio vaccines, post-nasal treatments, and much more. And it's not only, as I said, in the Gaza Strip, but also in these other countries where populations have been resettled. More than 41,000 Palestinians have died in the Gaza Strip since the start of this war. More than 100,000, as Andre said, have been injured. And in spite of this devastation, it is UNRWA employees who have continued the work tirelessly to protect innocent civilians and treat not only their physical needs, but also their emotional wounds. This is in great danger. At least 220 UNRWA staff, 220 UNRWA staff have been killed. Their shelters and schools have been bombed, and yet these aid workers have continued to work in the most dire of situations and often at tremendous risk to themselves. Prohibiting U.S. funding for this organization, which has been on the front lines, the front lines of this conflict in Gaza, is irresponsible and unacceptable, especially given our country's historic role as the largest contributor to UNRWA. Without our funding, UNRWA's capabilities will be severely limited and will lead to even more devastation and loss of life in Gaza. And unfortunately, UNRWA has been under constant attack by those who want to put a stop to this life-saving work. The stoppage of funding was an unnecessary and dangerous interruption to continuing to provide the humanitarian assistance that's so necessary. UNRWA has repeatedly been willing to make necessary reforms. It's held its own account, uh, employees accountable. UNRWA has complied with all the requested independent investigations, and those investigations have actually shown that the agency has a very robust, well-developed approach to neutrality and is extremely effective. Recognizing both the irreplaceable work of UNRWA and the implementation of its necessary reforms and accountability, guess what? The European Union, the UK, Canada, Australia, and all of the other allies have reinstated their funding for UNRWA. Now, it's up to the United States. We should do the same. We have to ensure that those acting in good faith to save civilian lives are not undermined by a lack of US funding. UNRWA's work to alleviate the suffering in Gaza and address the humanitarian crisis not only helps in the short term to save lives, but it also helps to promote long-term security and safety. And at the end of the day, the United States is very much a part, unfortunately, of this war, and we have to be a part of providing life-saving humanitarian assistance, including through UNRWA. I am so proud to be joining our leader, Representative Carson, and my colleagues in leading more than 60 members of Congress, even as we just introduce this bill to restore funding for UNRWA. I hope we add many, many more co-sponsors because people's lives depend on this. And with that, it is my great honor to introduce 
the deputy chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, a dear friend and partner with me on this work and so much else, Representative Ilhan Omar. Thank you, uh, Pramila. Uh, thank you to Representative uh, Carson. Um, and, and everyone else uh, who is here with us. It means a great deal that you all are leading to restore funding for UNRWA. As the primary humanitarian organization operating in Gaza, serving nearly six million Palestinian refugees, UNRWA provides unparalleled life-saving care. From delivering education, health, and social services UNRWA has been working to help one of the world's most vulnerable populations. Just a few months ago, Congress voted to cut funding aid to, an or to this organization that is quite literally the backbone of the humanitarian response in Gaza. This has been one of the most shameful decisions made since I've arrived in Congress. Because of the lack of moral courage, from far too many of our colleagues, we are seeing unprecedented amount of underweight babies and severely malnourished children across Gaza. We are seeing tens of thousands of people flood to the streets, desperately looking for food. And we are seeing the reemergence of polio, which was almost eradicated. As a former refugee, this is personal. I would not be here today without the generosity of the people of this country and so many across the world. That is the reason my, myself and my family have been given a second chance at life. The actions we take here have far-reaching implications for so many people around the world. With this bill, we have the opportunity to restore crucial funding, just like our allies have done, and bring back life-saving care. Thank you. And with that, I introduce um, just a tremendous champion, uh, a warrior for so many people in this country and across the world, Representative Jan Schakowsky. Well, it is certainly my honor to be here with advocates and all of my colleagues and the many who have already signed the uh, resolution and are, are, are fighting the, the law that we want to restore UNRWA to be in Gaza. But you know that um, UNRWA um, has also um, has over six million uh, people around the entire region it is such an important organization that has done such a great job in humanitarian assistance until the United States decided that we were not going to fund UNRWA any longer. Because there, was, uh, there were a number of people, they say, that were involved in the uh, October 6th attack on, on Israel, but that was a tiny number of the some 30,000 who have been helping in the region and have been helping in, in Gaza. And because a lot of investigations have been done, every other country among those of our allies that had decided to stop funding UNRWA have changed their mind. So now it is the United States alone and the fact that the United States has decided that it's not going to be there means a danger to the people who are dying, um, in danger of dying every single day, including children and women and families and everyone for basic needs that they have. And that is shameful. We can allow, not allow that. Now, we know that right now it's been pretty glim and whether or not we're gonna be able to uh, quickly end this war and we are, are, are seeing that uh, negotiations are certainly not going forward very quickly to do that. And that makes it even more important right now. We want to encourage negotiations to have a ceasefire and to end the war. But it, 
when that is not happening, that means that UNRWA is even more important because we aren't seeing right now um, how we're going to end the utter destruction that we are seeing of, of families there. And so I think it is so important for the United States of America to honor its values. We talk about our values all the time as the United States of America, that we care for people. And we need to now make sure that we put it to work by saying that every hand of volunteers who are willing or, or, or paid, um, who are willing to do the work of protecting lives, that we have to go back to supporting UNRWA. And I am looking forward to pushing that forward and getting more and more advocacy for it and more and more members of Congress to support it. Thank you. Oh, I see you. Well, yeah. I don't know it's okay, Representative. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Representative um, Talib, who has certainly been a strong advocate um, of the Palestinians that are under siege, let's welcome her. Thank you. Thank you so much to my good friend uh, Jan and for the incredible leadership of uh, Congressman uh, Carson and Congresswoman. Diapol, I really sincerely appreciate all of you understanding our shared humanity and fully seeing Palestinians as deserving to live. Uh, we already know the numbers, but I, it's important. I think I always I feel like I sometimes have to drill it into folks. But you know, I've read statistics after statistics of hunger and disease as it increases throughout Gaza, uh, where 70% of the population are already suffering from catastrophic levels of hunger. Uh, I heard uh, Congresswoman Jayapal talk about even not over 96%. Uh, number. I know about 50,000 Palestinian children under the age of four need urgent treatment of malnutrition. Uh, literally, they are starving to death. The Israeli government, as we know, has deliberately and systematically blocked food, uh, medicine, uh, medical supplies, fuel, tents from entering Gaza for almost a year now. Uh, I know that people already have starved to death. There has, there, they've have to been forced to, to eat grass, uh, animal feed, uh, just to survive. Uh, I don't know about you all, but you know, I look at uh, different um, uh, moments where different groups on the ground may be able to provide food, and all you see is children, not adults, children through these fence lines with empty uh, pots and pans. It's horrifying. The, 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 the images of just desperation on their face. Um, and so we're witnessing, uh, what we're witnessing continues, the use of starvation as a weapon of war, which we all know is a war crime. Uh, the starvation is a result of the intentional targeting of local food production, as we know, and infrastructure, obstruction of uh, aid convoys that continue not only by the Israeli government, but right-wing settlers trying to stop, the, again, the delivery of food and medical um, uh, um, services and aid that's needed. We know, again, over 1,500 hospital beds in Gaza remain in operation, only 1,500 uh, for a population of more than 2 million people. More than 60% of the homes have been destroyed or damaged, so people are living in tents out in the streets. Uh, just the images of children, uh, Jan, just in the corner, just sleeping uh, from just exhaustion. Uh, people don't even know where their family members are. It's, it's awful. We know that UNRWA is the UN organization that is most equipped to provide humanitarian relief. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. UNRWA is the only one that can effectively do it. It's the only one organization that has the capabilities to deliver the humanitarian aid and food that is needed. We already know, I know my colleague mentioned a couple organizations, but it needs to be known. European Union, Canada, Australia, Finland, Germany, Japan, Sweden, all have restored funding to UNRWA. All of them, except the United States, shame. Our government continues to be explicit in the starvation of Palestinian children when we do not act. This bill, again, I proudly support, would restore it, restore the funding for, for UNRWA. Again, much needed uh, services. And I always tell my colleagues, we must save lives no matter faith or ethnicity. And this is the way to do it, and making sure that we restore funding for UNRWA. Thank you so much. And I want to, again, um, thank the allies uh, that are in Congress speaking up. The fact that we have this many folks 
um, uh, supporting the bill is tremendous. So thank you again for your leadership on that. I'm going to introduce our folks from Friends, the Committee on National Legislation. Hassan Atayib has uh, been in a, uh, such a wealth of knowledge and information, has been very much rooted in uh, what is going on in the pain of the many of the Palestinians in Gaza. But even before that, he was my guy when I had to help start the starvation in Yemen that we continue to, again, fight for that as well. Hassan. Thank you all so much. Gaza isn't starving, it's being starved. Over two million Palestinians are facing one of the worst humanitarian catastrophes on planet Earth right now. With famine and disease spreading due to lack of aid access due to Israeli restrictions. That's why it's such welcome news that Representatives Carson, Jayapal, Shikowski, and so many of their House colleagues have introduced the UNRWA Funding Emergency Restoration Act. Earlier this year, I traveled to Israel and Palestine, and while I was there, I spent a lot of time with UNRWA staff at their headquarters in Jerusalem. I was in awe hearing about their incredible work under such difficult circumstances. In Gaza and the West Bank, where now hundreds of their colleagues have been killed. One conversation with an UNRWA employee named Nisreen really stood out to me. She told me about her work in off hours to evacuate Gazan children one by one who were in critical condition. She showed me pictures of severe burns, amputated limbs, and these are disturbing in images I'm not going to soon forget. And in total, they've been able to save more than 50 kids doing this, getting them safe passage to Egypt, Qatar, Turkey, Jordan, and Oman, all accompanied by a plus one adult and their siblings. Despite her being able to secure medical evacuation to a hospital in Florida, she explained that many families actually refuse to get treated in the United States out of fear. We tell them that there are good doctors and medical facilities, she said, but they're too scared to go to the United States. I said, Nisreen, you are doing God's work. I praise her for her passion and her inspiring words. And she said, I'm doing it to not surrender to the fact that there is no justice. That really upset, upsets me as an American to know that there are children in Palestine that feel this way about us. And without US funding, Nisreen and other UNRWA staff aren't gonna be able to serve Palestinians in need. And it's time for the U.S. to restore this funding and use its leverage with Israel to increase aid access. Yeah. Let's be clear. There is no replacement for UNRWA. It's the backbone of all aid delivery. And continuing to block U.S. funding is cruel and unusual punishment. Moreover, the U.S. stands alone right now. Many of our key allies, including the UK, European Union, European Union, Canada, France, Germany, Japan, and Australia, have all restored funding, and it's time for the U.S. to join that group. The impact of cutting U.S. funding also extends beyond Gaza. They provide uh, essential shelter, health care, education, and financial assistance to millions of other Palestinian refugees across the region, including the West Bank, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. And if UNRWA were to close its doors due to lack of funding, we're going to see even more devastating consequences for regional stability and even U.S. national security. Ultimately, we know that the definitive path to address this crisis is an immediate and permanent ceasefire. The release of hostages and unrestricted humanitarian access, but these are really just initial steps we know that UNRWA and protecting their vital work is essential for the long-term future of Gaza and the region. I am so pleased that all of these incredible advocates and members of Congress are doing what, it, what needs to be done, introducing this important bill, and I look forward to working them to take a stand for humanity, justice, and peace. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mara Cronenfeld, and I'm the executive director of UNRWA USA. Thank you. For the past 20 years, our nonprofit has proudly supported the work of UNRWA through advocacy, education, and fundraising efforts here in the U.S. As the U.S. government continues to withhold funding for Palestine refugees, those in Gaza are facing daily bombardment, 
catastrophic food insecurity, a health care system in ruins, and near total population displacement. Sadly, Unawai USA has become the only way for Americans to support, to support the only UN agency with the operational and technical know-how to ease the plight of mass civilian suffering in Gaza. The good news is that over the past year, the American people have stepped up and answered the challenge while the US government, our government has sadly stepped aside. From October to December 2023, Unawa USA saw our grassroots donor base grow from about 7,000 people to what? To 76,000 people in three months. Our supporters, the American people, have generated more than 50 million dollars in funds for UNRWA, providing critical humanitarian assistance to millions of Palestine refugees across the Gaza Strip, first and foremost, but also, as my colleagues have said, in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Syria, Lebanon, and uh, Jordan as well. These donors, they come from every state in the country, and they come from incredibly diverse ethnic and religious backgrounds. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Their support, their support sends a loud and clear message that the American people believe in the necessity of UNRWA's indispensable work. The U.S.'s government, their decision to withhold humanitarian funding is clearly disconnected from the will of the American people. Yet while the generosity of the American people is remarkable, I cannot, it cannot replace the U.S. government's financial support to UNRWA. The U.S. has historically been the largest donor to the U.N. agency, providing somewhere between a fourth and a third of the whole budget. In 2023 alone, the U.S. contributed $400 million. Clearly, without the United States, UNRWA cannot effectively carry out its life-saving humanitarian mandate. Actually, the U.S. remains, as my colleagues have said, an outlier among 16 nations who've paused funding and resumed funding. The U.S. is the only country to not come back in. And this is amidst the horror that is being wrought on Gaza. It is a moral and a strategic failure that the U.S. turns its back on millions of displaced families in a period of unprecedented need. That's why we are endorsing the UNRWA Restoration, Emergency Restoration Act to ensure that our fellow human beings can survive the greatest humanitarian crisis of the modern era. We are so grateful to the offices of the representatives Jayapal, Carson, and Schakowsky for leading this effort. This partnership is a demonstration of the wide congressional support that exists for UNRWA and the acknowledgement of its irreplaceable role, not just in Gaza, but across the Middle East. In restoring funding for Palestine refugees, this UNRWA support bill honors the most basic and inalienable truth that the people of Palestine, yes, are human beings, just like you and just like me, and that all lives are sacred, not just some. We cannot stand by why Palestinian people suffer. This is America's moment to do what is right and to save lives. It is imperative that our government, the United States of America, upholds its commitment to fundamental human rights and restores funding to UNRWA immediately. Thank you. And I'm now going to pass the mic to Sharif Ali from International Refugee Assistance Project. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Sharif Ali. I am the president of the International Refugee Assistance Project, or IRAP. Um, I'd like to start first by thanking Representative Carson, Representative Jayapal, and Representative Schakowsky for their leadership on this critical legislation. As a refugee rights organization, IRAP is proud to endorse the UNRWA Emergency Restoration Act, and we call on the administration and the members of Congress to act swiftly to restore this cr crucial funding. Refugees are amongst the most vulnerable populations in the world. The withdrawal of funding from an agency that serves millions of these individuals is not only a policy failure, but a moral one. Abandoning our communities undermines the global humanitarian system and erodes our moral standing on the international stage. Earlier this year, IRAP joined over 100 refugee and human rights organizations in calling for the immediate restoration of U.S. funding to UNRWA. This issue is more about more than just policy. It is a matter of life and death. 
for millions of Palestinians. For decades, UNRWA has provided life-saving aid and essential social services to Palestinians, Palestinian refugees in Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, the West Bank, and Gaza. These individuals depend on UNRWA for access to education, healthcare, food, and emergency relief. In many cases, UNRWA is the only lifeline for families enduring generations of displacement. The halt of U.S. funding to UNRWA was devastating. Classrooms lost teachers, clinics ran out of medical supplies, and families were left without critical food aid. For the 500,000 children attending UNRWA schools, this jeopardized both their education and their hopes for a brighter future. Gaza, already facing a humanitarian catastrophe due to Israel's bombing campaign and blockade, has suffered even more due to the lack of aid. For over 60 years, the U.S. was the strongest supporter and largest donor for UNRWA. Now, as all other international donors have resumed support, it is time for the U.S. to follow suit. UNRWA, sta UNRWA staff put their lives on the line every day to deliver aid, and they cannot continue their mission without U.S. support. Restoring funding to UNRWA is not just a policy choice. It is a moral obligation. This is about upholding core American values. We must act now to save lives, protect human rights, and stand for justice. Thank you. Next, I will introduce Madeline from Americans for Peace now. Good afternoon. I am Madeline Cherugino, the Director of Government Relations at Americans for Peace Now, the sister organization of Israel's oldest peace movement, Shalom Ashab, or Peace Now. First, I want to express my deep gratitude to Representatives Carson, Jayapal, and Chikowski, along with their dedicated staff, for their leadership in introducing the UNRWA Emer Funding Emergency Restoration Act. I also want to thank the original co-sponsors, as well as the partner organizations who have come together to support this vital effort. We are here today because a grave humanitarian crisis continues to unfold in Gaza. UNRWA has been at the forefront of addressing the immediate and urgent needs of over 2 million people. They are the largest provider of food, medical care, and education in Gaza. After almost a year of war, UNRWA's work is a lifeline for families struggling to survive especially as the blockade intensifies and the risk of starvation and serious illness grows daily. We were very troubled by the reports about the involvement of a small number of UNRWA employees with Hamas, but UNRWA rightfully took these accusations incredibly seriously and they have been investigated and addressed. It is absolutely vital that no UNRWA employee is involved in such activities and we thank UNRWA for their efforts to ensure that. But at the start of the war, UNRWA employed nearly 13,000 people in Gaza. We cannot allow the actions of a handful of people to overshadow the critical role UNRWA plays in Gaza's survival. No other organization can replace the work that UNRWA does. So the question we must ask ourselves is this. Are we willing to let two million people continue to face starvation because of the actions of a few? Can we, in good conscience, leave families, children, and the elderly without access to basic necessities? UNRWA services are essential both in Gaza as well as in their other fields of operation in the West Bank, East Jerusalem, Syria, Jordan, and Lebanon. They distribute food, provide health care, ensure clean water access, and run schools for thousands of children. These are life-saving interventions, and without them, the consequences would be catastrophic. The health care network in Gaza is overwhelmed. Nearly the entire population is displaced. Food supplies are critically low and basic hygiene is difficult to maintain, leading to the resurgence of polio in addition to other diseases. In this moment of unprecedented crisis, UNRWA must be able to continue its operations unimpeded. Every other country has resumed their funding to UNRWA. It's time for the United States to do the same. We must not abandon the people of Gaza who are relying on UNRWA. This is not a question of policy. It's a question of our values. We call on Congress to pass the UNRWA Funding Emergency Restoration Act and on the Biden administration to re restore UNRWA funding without delay. Thank you.
Hey all, thank you much. That concludes our press conference. Help us build the momentum for unrefunding. Thank you, peace. Thank you everybody. Thank you to all the speakers and thank you to the organizations who have been so helpful. Shout out to Code Pink.